now the the uh, the bullet goes to the to the barrel and yeah. you can shoot it. And when you, you when you press the yeah. see. Here in the armory of the Croatian police in Zagreb lie hundreds of seized firearms, a fraction of the total stock in the country. Ballistic expert Damir Tomasek looks after the collection. What kind of weapons do you store over here? These weapons are originally from the criminal circuit, or we received them from a special committee of home affairs. Criminals rarely use weapons with a long barrel. They would rather have weapons that you can fire many bullets with in a short time. So automatic revolvers and pistols. In this parking lot, a dealer was arrested by the police in 2002. He came from Rotterdam with two kilos of cocaine. It was someone who also dealt in weapons. There were dozens of guns found in Rotterdam coming from the city of Karlovac. Theo van Gogh was also murdered with one of these weapons. Marin Deskovic is an investigative journalist for the largest newspaper in Croatia. For years, he has researched organized crime with a special focus on weapons. There are definitely more of those weapons here than in the rest of Europe. That's simply because 20 years ago a war raged here. In the early 90s, a war broke out in Yugoslavia and a weapons embargo was set by the UN. No one was allowed to sell weapons to the Balkans. At that time, Croatia was not officially a country, with no army and nothing to fight with. So they had to think of other ways to arm themselves. Croatia, Slovenia and Bosnia-Herzegovina were trying to get weapons from the black market to arm their new army. At the same time, civilians were trying to get weapons in various ways. Whole armies were whipped up and providing themselves with weapons. But the black market was not sufficient. Much more was needed. The weapons factories were working overtime and creating other small illegal factories across the country. Here are some of the weapons that were made in Croatia. That happened in private workshops. Zagoria, a hilly area, a half hour drive from the capital Zagreb. During the war, many weapons were made in houses and barns here. Um, he's joking, we have enough for one more war. <laughs> it's not a problem we could, we could easily arm one small unit. The area has a long tradition of weapons. The pride of the people of Zagoria, the Kubura, once used for hunting, now for weddings, funerals and other milestones. You press it firmly so that the resistance is bigger, then you get a louder bang. At this nearby shooting club, locals practice the art of the kubura, fine-tuning their shooting skills. We have a wooden gun with an iron barrel. The caliber is 60 millimeters. Now it's loaded. You'll put the fine powder in first, and then there's a loud bang, like a thunderclap. Nowadays, the kubura is only allowed to be made in a few workshops in Zagoria. But during the war, the art of gunsmiths in the area was used to produce weapons for battle. How did they do it in their small factory? Uh, the weapons were manufactured from start to finish in workshops. From a piece of metal, forms of these dimensions were cut. And through finer shaping, they achieved results as you see here. These are the various steps in the process. But the production of those weapons didn't stop after the Civil War. 
Research by Interpol shows that producers in Zagoria switched to making weapons that were ending up in the hands of European criminals. Short machine guns, replicas of Mini Uzis, but of lesser quality, were sold to criminals on the black market, mainly in Western Europe, and a portion would have gone to South America. This weapon would be very popular with criminals because it's difficult to trace. No special features, no serial number. In an investigation, there's nothing to hold on to, not any ground on which it can be further traced. According to the Interpol investigation, secret workshops exist in dozens of villages in Zagoria, where, among other automatic weapons, pistols and silencers are made. The Croatian police only took action three years after the warning from Interpol. In the last six or seven years, the Croatian Criminal Investigation Department has done a number of studies, after which dozens of people were arrested and several illegal workshops were shut down. The members of the shooting club in Zagoria like to talk about their passion for Kabura. But when it comes to other weapons that many people keep illegally at home here, they keep their mouths shut even after a few glasses of wine. Well, we don't even hear that somebody still has guns at home. Uh, the, the wise people still have them hidden. The people of the Balkans were heavily armed after the civil war. To take all these weapons out of circulation, the UN immediately started large collection campaigns after a peace treaty was signed but not everyone wanted to hand in their gun voluntarily. These weapons are a relic of the war. People have different reasons not to relinquish them. Some are afraid that they might need them again if another war breaks out. The local police insist they want those weapons out of society at all costs. Police Chief Mikhail Sprach argues they've been driving major campaigns for years. A large publicity campaign has been started on TV and radio, at local level and so on. They explain that it's dangerous to have weapons at home. They may be old weapons and people often cannot handle them. Although the police are pleased with how many they've collected so far, many people just won't hand in their weapons. One of the reasons is that the police won't pay for them. Criminals do. A large portion of the people who want to get rid of their weapons therefore prefer to sell to gangs. The fact that these weapons are so heavily available is a great opportunity for criminal organizations who want to buy them. Afterwards, these weapons are sold all over the world. Last year, a few French journalists tried to buy themselves a weapon in the Balkans. How much is it to buy a weapon here in Bosnia? 400 euros, one. With two magazines. And where are they going? They're going for German, for Nematka, Franciska, Belgia. Petra Bakker is Holland's police commissioner for the European Union. Together with her EU colleagues, she tries to prevent more weapons coming this way from the Balkans. What we see is that a lot are going over land in different ways, sometimes with prepared hiding places, but sometimes a weapon lies simply under a chair. It is often not large parties. What we see now are not big, heavy, organized networks who do that, but loose networks. And what stands out if you look at the weapon trade is that weapons often go through several hands, through groups that also deal with other forms of crime. That chain is also supported by the research of journalist Marin Deskovic. Weapons that travel to other EU countries are usually exchanged for drugs. Very simple. They get those weapons in different ways. They are then smuggled to the Netherlands in secret compartments in cars. There they exchange it for synthetic drugs such as ecstasy and amphetamines. 
These drugs are smuggled back in the same repositories to Croatia and Bosnia and traded there. Here in the gun safe of the Dutch Forensic Institute are confiscated weapons from Croatia. Although they no longer come in the large numbers they did just after the civil war, the Dutch police are still worried. Such weapons could also get in the hands of confused people or people with radical ideas. And what also is a trend in armed robberies is that sometimes heavier weapons are used that also come from those areas. As Croatia becomes a member of the EU, European police forces have decided to set their focus more strongly on weapons from the Balkans. Cooperation from Europe is also very important. I expect that with cooperation, we'll get a better view on the parties involved in weapon smuggling, and we can act against it much earlier through joint action. How many people in Croatia have an illegal weapon lying in their barn or under their bed? Nobody knows. But as summer holiday season begins, the local police are keen to stress that the country certainly isn't dangerous. Croatia is one of the major tourist attractions in Europe. There are over 10 million tourists a year in our country. But there are no incidents that are related to weapons. We are known as a safe destination. There are no murders or explosions or other incidents that endanger the safety of tourists. These weapons from the Balkans may have been silent since the war, but they have become a reservoir for European criminals. As Croatia joins the European Union, the question remains, will their exodus towards the West be any easier to stop?